it was Granny's and Hung on You that drew me to the King's Road. Carnaby Street had just gone bad big time. I remember it as a dirt track. And there were three boutique there, Vince, Donnie and John Stephen. And then there was a nightclub called the Roaring Twenties. So you'd be weaving around and, you know, you'd see this other world going on, creeping in. We'd quite often hang around in Carnaby Street, just sort of to look, look at the shops and uh, look at people, meet people which of course we did, being attracted to young ladies, and so to be seen as well. And the atmosphere there was just incredible. When you actually went around looking at fashion, you know, being a girl, you looked at all the gorgeous guys that were around then. Because, you know, that was the moment in time where guys were fashionable. Then all the tourists come from all over the world, and I didn't like it then, because it was all kind of just, there were people here that were going there for a novelty and a souvenir. So I decamped up sticks and went to Kings Road, Chelsea. Kind of got fed up with hippies and, and psychedelia and I wanted to do sort of pop art colours and so and I thought, and I opened a shop called Mr Freedom. Looking at it now, I think the Chelsea girls are more middle class. So that attracted, I would say, the more intelligent guys. Kings Road was definitely a bit more middle class. I do remember Granny takes a trip very well, but it was merely window shopping because uh, those prices were way out of my league. They were for the more sort of upmarket people. You'd get French guys over. They were called minous, which is the, the French equivalent to mods. And their hairstyles were like um, a French dandy from the, um, from the uh, French Revolution times. Uh, there's a dandy called Les Incroyables, and it's where Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood, Keith Richards, all those guys, so that haircut is from those dandies. There was also an Ivy League kind of thing too, a shop on Austin's, called Austin's on Shaftesbury Avenue, which was importing button-down shirts, and that was also a big thing in those narrow suits. So, of course, that was another influence in the in my tailoring you know something that i absorbed they opened a shop in richmond called the ivy shop and they bought in all this american stuff and their ad in uh, town magazine was an american car with the back of the car open with all this ivy league clothing falling out and it said something like, yes, we're back from the States with a new bunch of stock, which was great, and it seemed really personal, you know? Yeah, there was a club on um, Frith, or Greek Street, called Le Kilt, which was full of French students. And they kind of had that modernist, bouffant hairstyle, existential look. It's not English, it's American. So you've got that American element come in, the hairstyles from France, those French dandies have got a lot to answer for. But it's not just collectors of original garments that dedicate extraordinary amounts of time and money to the fashion choices of the first smart youth movement. And when you can't find the original, then there's an opportunity to improve upon it. Charlie. Charlie, 1985. He's the one who used to continue the modern continue. And after I came in 1985, I was taken over of him. And I continue the same thing because nobody else left to do the mod style. So everyone used to come in with a sketch or not drawing something or crazy designs and say, just I want to do this one. And we used to do them. I can't remember the name of the girl. Uh, she came and asked him to mix in between the mod style with the 70s styles. And we done the hipster's trousers. And she's asking for very big tunnel loops with her holes in the middle. So can cross uh, the belt inside and can see two different colors on it. It was a very difficult style, that one. But it's something interesting as well because it's a job we never done. The lowest pair of hipster we done it was three and a half inches which was just holding on your body, you can't hold, only three and a half inches is that much. On another things again, 
between them they used to jealous they used to come and say uh, anybody done this color if i say uh, somebody done this color again they say okay call it off uh, i'm going to choose another another color they don't want each other to wear the same things and and this kind of jealousy is there is between each other the mod uh, the suit will start from 750 which is a price only for the mod i learned it from charlie so now i'm telling my son to pass over the things to him so somebody is going to continue the trade to, not to die so for men it would have been just men and there was a that was in tryon street at a tailoring shop and a shirt shop trouser shop next door obviously hung on you and granny takes a trip but somebody that would made a lot of money at it was um dandy fashions john crittle i think he was back by the beatles I used to just sort of run up and down Oxford Street and they used to have a lot of lovely little dress shops and you could usually find something suitable uh, in them. But I do remember in particular in Regent Street, Fifth Avenue. How many of those bright ideas came from Ron Tommy Roberts? Mr Freedom, they'd, come, they'd, they'd, they'd jet, jet in from Hollywood to go to that one shop. Uh, well, London, King's Road, boutiques. Film stars had come just to do that. You know, I opened a shop in Covent Garden, no one knew where it was, they couldn't find it. And they all come expecting like a, a Dolly Bird, bright coloured rock and roll environment and I just played this very heavy kind of John Cage music and a very dull interior and it was very morose and I liked that atmosphere. But of course, it never worked commercially. And the girls' shops were um, gear, and there was one with a big target on it. Of course, Bazaar, you know, Mary Quant. You had all the uh, chain things like Chelsea Girl and stuff like that, selling Dolly Rockers, and which is quite funny that that label's called Dolly Rockers because they were getting both markets, getting the Rocker Girls and the Dolly Girl mod. When Courage came online, I really loved their clothes. They were so refreshing, so different, so space age with the helmets and the boots in particular and geometric dresses. I mean, things were just exploding all over the place from that to uh, Mao to um, the hippie sheepskin brigade, which I never particularly liked either. A shop called Hung On You at the same time as us, run by Michael Rainey, and he had wonderful taste. But then he became, I guess, politically motivated by Mao. And um, so there were all these military up here, Mao jackets to be found with dragons on, very exotic. But um, from that, he started reading Tolkien. And, and next thing, we'd, they're all looking like Bilbo Baggins in there. I think Michael Rainey can uh, take the credit for the Regency thing, really, and the Nehru jackets, and the caftans, and the gangster suits, like during the Bonnie and Clyde thing. I can remember going, taking a delivery of ties to Michael Rainey, and he was in the basement, stoned out of his brains, playing the drums, and he just was handing out these smiles on a stick to everybody that came in the shop. Uh, they used to have a chaise long in the window and they would sit in the window with Afghan coats on and things like that, smoking joints. They were the, they were the window display, which was amazing. I mean, nobody around that area, must, they just didn't know what was happening to the place. And for those who want it all and want it now, there's always off-the-peg shopping. Arguably one of the most successful modern-day retailers of 60s influenced fashion is Velvet Illusion, only four shops down from where Bieber sold their £3 dresses nearly four decades before. First of all, Mary Quant, because uh, she uh, made it available to the public, to the, to the youngsters. So design fashion was available for the very first time to the general public and I think that's very very important to, uh, to say. I'm Barbara Blanke from, uh, from uh, Biba which uh, was a very <coughs> very very unusual thing. 
Another very interesting uh, phenomenon uh, of, uh, of this time, of course, was uh, John Pierce from uh, Great Taxi Trip from the King's Road. He was the first one uh, who invented uh, a multisexual boutique, the very first one. When we're talking uh, about Quant again and, uh, and PS in that context, we're talking about milestones. Really. The opinions about that one are very, uh, very different, but I think Mary Quant uh, inspired the French scene as well. So all the others like Courage and all those big names, they were definitely inspired by Mary Quant. It's a mix from all those, all those people who created uh, Swinging London. And it's a puzzle. All those designers uh, from the 1960s, all those um, outstanding creative people, and it's a puzzle, actually. It's so, yes, I do uh, see them definitely being uh, as a work of art or pop art, and pop art includes uh, modern, <coughs> modern uh, or modernist clothing as well as uh, psychedelic influences. Uh, it's definitely art. Pop art. <laughs>